I'm talking about the social housing plan. Imagine tonight a storm hits your house. The roof is gone, hail damage, rips through your house. You run out to the car, you sleep, spend a rough night in your car. You wake up next morning and you think, we cannot return to this. It'll be months before it's repaired. So you could stay with family and you could stay with friends. You might even be able to rent a, mo a motel. How long can you do that for? You might have a caravan, great place for a holiday, but how about spending months, maybe even years in your caravan? You realize you need to rent. When you go looking for that rental, you're gonna find it very difficult to find rentals in Harvey Bay, Maryborough and Bundaberg. So I wanna talk about social housing, distinct from affordable housing. We have a problem in Australia Across the board, 10 years ago, we needed an extra 100,000. Here we are today, 10 years later, we're up to a quarter of a million houses short and the problem's not getting better, but worse. So housing is a real issue for our community. Back in the 1800s, average house was about three bedrooms. Today, it's six times that size. And yet we have more than half the people living in those houses in terms of numbers. Bigger houses, less people living in them. There is a problem that we need to solve around housing. Part of the issue, and there are three things I want to talk about, are first of all, the client group we often work with for social housing. They are overrepresented in terms of mental illness, also, in terms of the education, the number that complete high school is limited and that impacts them in a number of different ways, such as their education, therefore their employment, and therefore their ability to be able to afford rent. There are other issues in terms of substance abuse. We also see issues around domestic violence. And along with that, a number of other social issues. Things like hoarding, the ability to maintain a property effectively so that they satisfy the landlord. So that's a challenge and we need to do work in that space to help people. We also have issues around investing in properties. There's not the incentive to invest in properties because the return on investment is perhaps not what people really want in the market. Then there's the issue of properties themselves being damaged and people then having to deal with that issue. There's the willingness of the market to take in people from the sector where social housing is required. There's a broader empathy of the community that perhaps under trying to understand why people struggle within that space. The other area that we also struggle with are things like legislation that allow alternate forms of housing. We have issues of the affordability of a house and for people having to move out of areas away from their social supports. So you can see that there's a number of challenges about being able to deliver housing. So moving forward, what are some of the solutions? What are some of the things that we're doing to address the housing issue? One of those things is that we need to take a housing first approach. That is, we need to make it a priority get, to get people into housing first. Those countries and cities that successfully addressed homelessness have made this a priority. The second area that we're dealing with is around the fact that we need good data to understand the issue at currently so we can respond appropriately. We also need innovation. We need to think outside the box and so that includes changing our legislation to address some of the issues to do with housing, the size of housing, perhaps even the notion of tiny houses being placed on properties that 
are able to take more buildings. Also, the idea of housing itself, who you live with. So we have in the past addressed the issue of older people, especially older women, being able to be connected up with other women and sharing properties together. And that has been a solution in the past that needs to be rejuvenated. The other area of innovation, such as in Holland, where younger people, say university students, are matched up with older people, and that allows them to be able to get, for the university student, cheaper rent, the young person, cheaper rent, but at the same time, dealing with an issue of loneliness and support for the mature age person. When we think of other solutions that we need to look at is regularly meeting together as a sector and to try and ensure that we work collaboratively, share information and address the solution together. But we need more than the sector, we actually need to involve the real estate industry and the housing industry as well to see how we can come up with collective solutions. We also need to educate people about how to be good tenants, how young people moving into housing can ensure that they maintain their tenancy. We need to think about potentially head leasing properties for people coming out of prison so that when they come into the community sector they are assured of a property and don't fall back into perhaps ways that get them reincarcerated. We also need to ensure that in our communities there are risk groups and so in terms of making sure that there are women's shelters, men's shelters, youth shelters in every single one of our major regional communities. The reality is it's a multi-pronged approach we need and it is not a quick fix, it is a long-term issue that we need to deal with it. But we need to begin now. You may remember I said at the beginning Imagine your house was destroyed in a storm. Where would you go? The one thing we know, you will struggle to find a rental property. And that storm that took your house is a storm that is coming around housing. And we need to prepare for that storm before the storm really hits us. Because advice from overseas tells us we are but on the crest of the wave of a major housing problem. Thank you for listening to me tonight.